Welcome back everyone, uh, we're in the armoury again, as usual. Um, so it's been obviously busy here, so appreciate everyone for bringing all their lovely toys to me. Uh, I've been doing all sorts of uh, different guns and that recently, it's been great fun. Uh, I've just finished, literally finished doing a pistol service on a TM SIG. So yeah, we love a TM pistol, so that's now one's all done. Um, but the reason the camera's come on is because I'm about to do this. Now this is a Crytac Barrett. Um, now this is going to be quite an involved build. Uh, this has been brought to me because it wants kind of, I suppose, kind of most of the upgrades you'd really want to do, really. Uh, we have got things like, uh, we're going to do piston upgrade, piston head, we're going to do spring guide so that it can handle a stronger spring. Um, we are going to put a new gear set in it, so a faster set there, we've got a new motor to go in, we're going to upgrade to a tight ball barrel and we've got one of the maple leaf hot rubbers, so we're kind of doing everything uh, to this one. Uh, with the intention of making it more powerful um, and a sort of faster rate of fire really. So just to show us where we are at the minute, so we'll do a before and an after on this one. Um, now at the minute it's currently running on 0.25 gram BBs. So if we do, now let's do this on full auto. So that currently is 255 feet per second on a 0.25 gram BB, which is 0.75 joules, and that is doing about 13 and a half rounds a second. Uh, so our aim today is going to be just to bring that up, um, as well as the power. Uh, we want to be aiming for somewhere between a joule and 1.1 joules. Really, is where we want to be. Uh, with a much snappier, much more exciting rate of fire. So um, I suppose let's pull it apart and get started. Um, let's do it. Okay, so we're now inside, uh, we can now see what we're working with. So it turns out the spring guide is more than substantial, so we don't need to be upgrading that uh, because it's already nice and solid, so that's not a problem. But we will do a new spring, we will do the piston, and the reason we're going to do that is because, hold on, let's hit it all out, shall we? So. The reason is we don't want all these plastic pickup teeth because if we're going to try and push it faster and we're going to try and push it stronger, there's a very good chance they're going to strip. So we will upgrade that um, and we will do the gear set in here as well. Now, I'm pretty confident I can make a good air seal out of what's on here, so I don't think there's any mad need to be upgrading any of that. So that will be fine. Um, so we're going to start by getting the new gear set uh, set up in there and shimmed. Okay, so fasting forward a little bit to here, and um, I was about to put some uh, a faster uh, gear set in there. However, it appears every day is a school day, um, and you might see on here that that gearbox shell doesn't quite close at all. Now, it turns out that in these gearboxes, uh, which is something that I am learning as we go, um, that that was the gear I wanted to put in. Now, the bushing, or sorry, the bearing in this case, uh, sits slightly proud. That's obviously deliberate from Crytac because the, uh, the gears they've put in has got a sunk bit in here to allow that to sit on there like so. Now, that physically isn't going to fit. Um, and I think the best way of doing it is probably rather than to try and swapping a load of bearings and stuff over, they've obviously designed this gearbox to work with these and this. So it's a little bit kind of proprietary, I suppose, to them, but is it going to really affect what we want to achieve at the end of the day? Possibly not, because we can just put a faster motor on it. So I think the decision is going to be to stick with the original gear set rather than try and make it go super mental quick. Uh, because if I put that back on there, that will close nicely and to be fair to them that particular gear there is actually shimmed in there quite nice uh, the only thing I wouldn't be 100% a fan of uh, but we're going to leave it anyway is the fact that it's got one of these silly uh, spring tops here which I suppose in fairness is pretty rigid 
it's a little bit of go in it. Um, but yeah, so based on what we found out there, we're gonna stick with the original gear set, I think. Um, so I'll just make sure they're all shimmed in and I'll make sure they're aligning with the motor nicely because uh, we will still put the faster motor in. This is good, so we're winning. Uh, that's got a fantastic air seal. That's got the new piston and piston head. Now, I quite like using these pistons. Um, they obviously are all alloy, so they're all solid. Uh, but the main thing on these, compared to some other pistons, that might be plastic with metal teeth, is that this is such a chunky tooth at the back. It's so robust. The only downside is they're a little heavier than normal pistons, but unless you're doing stupid rate of fire, um, they're fine. It's what I use in most of my own kit. Uh, which has been adequate. I've never, ever, ever had an issue with them. They've been absolutely fantastic, these things. Um, so that's done. The shims are all good. So that's perfect. We've aligned that with the motor. All we've got to do is re put it back together now. Okay, we're back here again just a minute because here's me getting all carried away uh, doing all the piston as seen here um, and wanted to put it back together and test it. I failed to check the compatibility of that piston with the gearbox shell. Now, I suppose that's something that I've used these in so many things and this will be the first incompatible gearbox with that that I've ever had. Basically, as that's pulled back, the teeth are a little bit too tall, the standard gears in there to have enough space for them to fit in here without pushing that up too high to jam it up. So I've gone to pull the trigger and the thing's jammed. So that will not work. So we've come back to basics uh, and I'm trying other pistons. Now I've got this one, which that now um, is, is designed for a high torque, so it's designed for use with a 32 to one gear set, but never mind, it will still work with this. Um, so that on testing in here um, functions fine with the gears that are in it, so we're going to have to change the piston I'm going to use. Now, that's my bad because I should have checked it, but I've put myself into the full sense of security of using that one so many times that I've never had to worry. But yeah, so we're going to put that in because that is dead smooth, so that one will work. Right, I tell you what, whilst we're on the uh, subject of piston compatibility, um, obviously we've, we've tested that one as a kind of a loose piston within the shell with the gears and we know that it'll roll back and forth with the gears rotating so we know that's fine. Um, we've now got the piston head attached to it so if we push that all the way into our cylinder that will dictate where it rests. Now the other thing we're going to look for uh, which I can think is going to be a problem on this is is that tooth there going to be in the way so not the rear one second one along because as this rotates round because that piston's sitting there that is going to hit that tooth where we want it to be into there so i can lift that up to get that to sit so we want it there but that tooth's in the way so we're gonna have to take that off to allow the correct uh tooth to be engaged first um, and that will mimic what we had on there because that was missing too, which is another reason these are so good and I've always used them. Um, but yeah, let's do that. Let's chop a tooth off. So what you can see here, what we've done, um, that second tooth, uh, basically, I've effectively cut the top of it. So there's still a little bit of tooth there, because uh, I, I always believe if, if you can leave a little bit, you're leaving more for the gear to grab Therefore, you're helping with durability because there's more teeth doing the work. Um, but it does mean that when that's sitting in there now, that can rotate round, that will pass quite happily, and it will grab, and away you go. And that grabs nice and flat on there as well, so that's really good. Uh, where that's sitting, that's what we like. 
and then all the way back and release so there we go that will be I'm very confident will be the end of my problems with the pistons um, Okay, well the good news is uh, the, that piston is now functioning in there, it's not too tight, it's cycling fine. And we are nice and snappy as well, so that's really good. So we're going to put that to one side for a moment and we're going to do the barrel. Now I have prepared the new barrel to go in, so the old barrel is going to quite simply come straight out. We will do a quick clean of the hop-up chamber because the last thing you want is any dirt remaining in there and the BBs becoming contaminated before the guns even have a chance to fire them. So that is of course if I can get this apart. Okay so we got it off finally, that did take some wrestling, that was the tightest barrel clamp I've ever seen. I'm surprised I got that off without snapping it to be honest, but we're there. Right, we're just going to ditch that because that's all the old. Tree. what did it have? Oh look at that. Some, I don't know if you'll see it. It's going to focus, but that's got some weird kind of slotted thing, so I don't know what they were thinking when they made that, but yeah, we don't need it. Now that is an interesting hop up nub, they've created a bit that holds on to it. That's pretty nifty, isn't it? Don't want that bit though. We want one of these, we want the Omega Nubs. That's a concave Omega Nub. That is how to get the best out of the uh, Maple Leaf buckets. Right, we're going to do a quick chrono check. Uh, now that we've got the new barrel and new pot, uh, and we've done the changes to the gearbox that we want to do, uh, we need to see where we are before I put, because I've got loads of little bits left on the desk here that I need, still need to put back in the gun. Rather than doing all the fiddly bits, I decided it a good idea uh, to get all the essentials in, see what power it's doing, um, yeah, in case there's anything else we need to do before uh, we make it difficult to take apart again. So, here we go. There we go, it's a good job we checked because that has just pushed a 0.25 at 370 feet per second. So, yeah, a touch over you could say. Right, so we've opened the gearbox again and we've got the sector gear out. Now, the thing I've decided to do to lower some of the uh, power uh, that we're producing is I'm going to start by taking two teeth off of the sector gear here just to reduce the uh, length of the pull on that piston. Um, that's going to obviously reduce the FPS, uh, but we don't need the full stroke of that cylinder because it's a ported cylinder on that uh, gun, um, so it's pointless it coming all the way back. So we might as well gain a slight bit of trigger response um, in lowering the power on this rather than just putting a weaker spring in because uh, that spring already is rated at M100. So why it's so powerful, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, this is the way I'm going to choose to start lowering it. Okay, so we've shaved off just two teeth off that sector gear, so we're going to put it all back together and we're going to see what effect that's made on our FPS. Uh, and I think if it needs any more, I might just make small adjustments uh, to obviously the spring that we're using. Um, if it needs more than that. So I've chopped the spring down a little bit. Um, if you are going to chop a spring in your gun, uh, my suggestion would be to make sure you make that smooth and flat at the top again. So bend it back into shape like I have there. So that it's almost like a factory finish ish. Ish, definitely being the right word there. Um, it just means it will sit nicer in the gun so that you've got flat at both ends. Here we go. 1.05 joules. So we are bang on the power we want. Uh, all we've got to do now is put all the little details back in the gun that I've left off while testing um, and then this will be complete.
Right, that's all back together now. Um, so all the upgrades are now in. So we've done the barrel, the hop, uh, we've done the motor, we've done the spring, we've done the piston, piston head. Um, so it's had a full uh, kind of upgrade kit put into it. Um, so we jumped from 255 FPS uh, on the 0.25, of which we're gonna chrono in a second. Now I'm still running on the original battery, so it's a 7.4 volt battery, uh, which when we tested earlier before doing everything, uh, was about 13 and a half rounds a second. So, Well, it certainly sounds like an improvement. Uh, that was 306 feet per second, 1.01 joules, and the rounds per second is bang on 20 rounds a second. So we've gone from 255 FPS to 306, so maximum power, and 13 and a half rounds per second up to 20 rounds per second on the same battery. So we've changed none of that. I don't put an 11 one in it because that would just be silly. Um, but yeah, that completes that one. Quite a satisfying one to do, I think, that one. I've enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, like it, subscribe to it, um, and I'll see you all in the next one.